So guys, my name is Hunter Cookson. I'm one of the R&D tax credit and grant specialists at RDP Associates. This is Greta. Hi everyone, I'm Greta Bianchi. I'm uh, one of the senior grant writers at RDP. Yeah. So uh, what we're going to be focusing on today is uh, specifically various government grants that are available to uh, companies, whether startups or in Canada. Um, we'll also be talking about the SR and ED tax credit um, and essentially just the roadmap of how we can navigate it. The purpose of today essentially is to kind of educate you guys on everything that's out there. Um, things change so frequently in, re in relation to government grants, uh, it can be confusing. Um, but this is why we're here to uh, you know, make sure that we can be as clear as possible of what's out there and uh, how we can assist in helping, of course. Okay. So in terms of innovation, uh, there's lots of uh, government grants and, uh, and various things in relation to innovation. The first two things that are listed up here, we have the Industrial Research Assistance Program, also known as IRAP, um, and then we also have the Strategic Innovation Fund. We may not be talking too much about that for, for specific purposes, but I'll ask you guys what kind of projects you may have. Um, something that's new uh, to Canada is super clusters as well. Um, this is new and emerging. We are continuously getting new information on that, so we'll be able to touch uh, base on that. And then we'll also talk about the SR and ED tax credit, also known as SHRED. So in terms of government grants, we have a couple of, uh, uh, I guess, what we call sectors. So we have the regional development agencies. We have the Canadian Trade Commissioner Services, which is about accessing foreign markets. Um, we have training and hiring grants, as well as um, specific industries. So those specific industries would be grants for agricultural or clean technology as well. So to dive into the government grants, we will start with IRAP. So that is the Industrial Research Assistance Program. So I'm not sure how familiar everyone is with the uh, SHRED tax credit. Um, but essentially what this is, is a government grant for any sorts of innovation um, in relation to new products, services, and processes. Um, so there's actually been some pretty recent changes to this. The funding per project used to be about $5 million. Um, it has since increased to $10 million. However, what we've seen, I believe, is around fifty to $400,000 uh, uh, for funding uh, per project. Um, one of the things to note in relation to government grants, specifically for IRAP, is is that it really matters about when you're applying for this, uh, this government grant. The reason why is this is time sensitive in terms of uh, when your project is. You need to obtain the government grant before you start your project. So that's one of the most critical things to be thinking of um, when you're going for a government grant. The Strategic Innovation Fund. Does anybody in this room have any projects that might be going over $10 million in spending? <laughs> if you guys do, we can definitely talk about this for sure. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about it very quickly and the reason I ask, so essentially the minimum requirements are $10 million projects and up. Um, so there's been companies like Linamar who have been approved for I think it was like a $100 million grant or something like that. And so although they say it's open to different sectors, um, they've been kind of favoring automotive um, in, in the past little bit. And so we haven't seen a bunch of grants in relation to this, but if you guys do have open uh, projects that are going to be $10 million and more, uh, by all means, we could always focus on that as well. So innovation superclusters. Actually, Greta, if you want to go to the next slide as well. Okay, so sure. innovation superclusters are something that's new and emerging, um, and it's, it's definitely a very interesting thing. So there's going to be five innovation superclusters across Canada. So we have it in BC, Saskatchewan, Ontario, uh, Quebec, and Nova Scotia. Now each innovation supercluster is going to be focusing on a different type of thing. So if we were to take three examples, so BC is digital technology, Ontario is advanced manufacturing, and Quebec is going to be uh, AI, so artificial intelligence. Now what this is, and this hasn't come out yet, and we're still kind of learning more as it emerges, but essentially what it is, is the government's putting a, an amount of money uh, into the supercluster. Large companies are also now putting money into the supercluster to kind of match the funding. And then there's also small, like some SMEs that can get involved in this. So essentially what it is, is trying to create an innovation ecosystem. So in reality, what you're looking for is you have an SME, you have a university, and you have a larger company that goes to the super cluster. The advantage of this is that whoever takes on that project, it would be a larger company. So you can utilize your, whatever your innovation or your new product is, you can utilize different kind of streams through the larger company. 
Now, the interesting thing about this is the question arises of who's sharing the IP. Um, and so, once again, this is something that's kind of emerging as we go along. It's not yet out, and we're thinking it's, I think it's in the fall that this is going to start to come to mm -hmm. fruition. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's something that us as a company, we're keeping on top of and making sure that we can notify our clients of this or potential clients um, of how this is going to uh, come about. Shred tax credits. Who's heard of shred tax credits in here? Some people, yeah, okay. This is probably the most known uh, uh, thing out there just in relation to what we're speaking about today. Uh, so the shred tax credit has been around for a long period of time. Uh, the difference between the shred tax credit and government grants is the shred tax credit is kind of an entitlement. So uh, any sort of eligible expenditures that a company is doing on research and development, um, if you're uh, claiming obviously the right things, uh, you can get uh, I mean, if you're, a pub if you're a publicly traded company, it's 15% non-refundable. But for a CCPC, so a Canadian controlled private company, um, you can get up to 40% uh, around that area back uh, and it's going to be uh, refundable, right? So it's going to go directly back to your bottom line. So 40% for CCPC, um, refundable. But if you are publicly traded or foreign owned, something that's not a CCPC, uh, then it does go to a 15% non-refundable. So it can be applied to future taxes up to 20 years. So obviously it's still very beneficial for, beneficial for companies to be doing this, um, but that percentage does decrease quite a bit. Okay. So we have regional development agencies as well. So we have the Women Entrepreneurship Strategy with $105 million. Greta, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure if this has been... It's in the process of being implemented. It was announced in the, just the last federal budget, so they're going to create this new sort of uh, infrastructure to support women entrepreneurs specifically. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we also have the West Atlantic Skills Development and Economic Diversification with $35 million, and then we have Federal Economic Development Agency of Southern Ontario with $920 million. Um, so that is FedDev. Um, once again, these are things more along the lines of loans. Um, generally, these are in the greater Toronto area. They're kind of specifically um, looking for what they would call underprivileged areas and trying to build those up further. So if we talk about accessing foreign markets and the grants involved in that, we'll, we'll hop into it. So first off, we have can export, and I'm just going to preface this really quickly. So I sent out this uh, it, Thursday, um, and already some slides need to be changed because some of the government grants have been changed, okay? And so just realistically, that's how fast these things do adapt and change, and uh, it's just really important to be staying on top of this. So one of the key notable changes with can export well, I'll go into what it is first. So if you are looking to access a foreign market, so let's say that you're looking to develop or I guess uh, go into Germany, let's say. Um, this is uh, a grant that will help with uh, travel costs, uh, trade show costs and things like that. And then also I think even patent costs as well now. Yeah, patent filing, any legal fees, um, advertising, market research that you want to do to try and enter into or set up in, a, in another foreign country. Yeah, exactly. So it's really going to help you expand into, once again, accessing foreign markets. Um, the key thing here is, is that you can't have much of a presence in that country that you're entering into. So I believe it's, believe it's below 10% sales uh, that you need to have to qualify for this. So you can't have revenue in that country already um, in, in terms of the qualifications of the specific government grant. So one of the key changes that's happened so far is it used to be $100,000 that, that, that the funding limit would be. It has reduced to $50,000, but one of the key things that's changed with it as well is I believe that you can apply to multiple streams. So let's say that you're looking to go into the US and Germany. Um, you can uh, apply for both government grants, up to $50,000 for these uh, eligible expenses, um, but you have to finish one at a time. So if you got approved for both, um, you start with the US, let's say, once everything is completed there, then you move on to Germany. Um, so but that changed literally, I think, on Thursday of yeah, last Thursday week. Yeah, Friday. But yeah, so you can still get up to 100000 in total in the year if you have multiple projects, it's just 50000 per project or per country kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So going global innovation, um, so this will give you, once again, this is for traveling costs and various expenses uh, under that umbrella. Um, it can go up to $75,000, so 75% up to $75,000. 
Um, so to give you an example of what this is about is, let's say um, that you're looking to, we'll just use Germany as an example once again. Let's say that you're looking to uh, branch into the German market, but they have a specific standard to be living up to. Um, this would be a grant that can help with, once again, travel costs and various things like that um, to help learn their innovation to live up to their standard, okay? Um, apart from that, another example of what you could use is also there's various uni universities across the world that are leaders in their research and, and development that you may want to go learn from as well. Um, that would also kind of qualify. Ultimately, what this is for is learning or, or getting the ability to sell globally. So export market access. Um, so you can have a presence in the country that you're looking to grow and expand into. Um, and what this is more specifically focusing on is trade shows. Um, so this is, so you can get up to $30,000 per trade show for a booth rental, travel costs as well. Um, and that goes up to, I believe the cap is six trade shows, if I'm not. Yep, six yep. shows a year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you can already have revenues in that country that you're in, but it's more so for developing and uh, going to the trade shows. So, but the rental of the booth has to happen. Um, it's not about buying the booth or anything like that, but you can rent booths and this is what some of the money is provided for. So Ontario Exporters Fund, so this is specifically for hiring an export manager within Ontario. Um, it can give you up to $80,000 um, to get an export manager in Ontario. I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's if you're looking to hire somebody, to specifically somebody who has experience in managing foreign sales, this would go towards their salary uh, for up to two years. And Fed Dev investing in business innovation. So, Greta, do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, so this one's interesting. This is a matching fund uh, for any companies, small Southern Ontario uh, startup and emerging companies that have secured already angel or venture capital investment. Uh, so if you have a term sheet or a commitment letter from an investor, you take that to FedDev and they will match 50% of that secured funding to bump up your total available funding so that you can, you know, accelerate your project, accelerate your development. Um, and that's, that's repayable, it's a loan, but it's zero interest. They don't take any equity stake in your company and it's just sort of leveraging your already secured uh, investment, getting a little bit extra from the government. And Innovation Solutions Canada. So essentially, the Government of Canada is one of the largest purchasers of goods and services in Canada. Um, and so what they're looking for with this is there's various calls, usually in relation to something different uh, every single time that they're looking to focus on. Um, so I'm not sure what the, like, the latest calls were. Like they had one from the Department of Defense looking for new uh, types of materials that they could make uh, personal protective equipment out of. They had like calls for autonomous vehicle technology. They'll have five or six specific sort of themed competitions uh, every round that they're looking for. Certain government agencies are looking for stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I believe you can get uh, up to $150,000 for a proof of concept. And then if you can progress further in this government grant, that you get up to a million dollars for developing prototypes as well. So, talent funding. So, uh, hiring and training grants as well. So the Canada Ontario Job Grant. So any companies that are doing uh, any sorts of third party training, um, there is a government grant for, for that. Um, so if you are, it can provide you uh, up to $300,000 for this government grant. Once again, it's 50% up to $300,000. Now, if the company is under uh, 100, uh, 100 employees, they will match uh, 83%. If you're over 100 employees, it will be 50%. Both are capped at three hundred thousand dollars. So any sorts of third-party training that you may be doing with your company, um, it's, it's a great government grant to be going for. So the IRAP Youth Employment Program. Uh, so this is a program under IRAP that we had spoken about before. Um, so this is for hiring grad students in a tech-oriented position, um, and this will go can give you a government grant that would cover fifteen percent or fifteen uh, percent up to fifteen thousand dollars per new hire. I believe it's usually capped at one to two hires. Yeah, based on just the, the limited limited budget they have, you can get one or two new hires funded. Yeah. Yeah. 15000 each. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the NCERT Experience Award. So this is a co-op program. Once again, the hires have to be more in a tech, 
tech related position. Um, so what this will provide you is uh, $4,500,000 uh, per co-op student up to 15 co-op students, okay? Now there also is a tax credit that you can claim that does apply to this that would give you an extra $3,000 so we're actually looking more along the lines of seven and a half thousand dollars per co-op hire up to 15 hires. This once again, so just to reiterate, this is how fast things change with the government grants. This closed on Thursday, um, last Thursday. Um, so the funding is, is gone, so this is actually shut down. Um, but I had sent that in right on Thursday. So uh, they, may, they may reopen. They may reopen because this is, has been an annual program. But um, yeah. yeah, right now for this year so far, they've yeah. already given away all their money. That's it. That, that's what happens, right? And, and once again, you know, they'll have a certain amount of money to be giving out. And so there's certain times to capitalize and understand when we need to be applying for these. So. Okay, so my tax accelerate and elevate. I mean, it's a similar program as what, what uh, the previous one is. Um, so my tax elevate is for PhD students, um, and it's, I believe it's an apprenticeship, right? Fellowship, apprenticeship, Fellowship. yeah. And so what that will provide you with a tw up to twenty five thousand dollars per year per PhD student over the course of two years. So it equals out to a cap of fifty thousand dollars. Then my tax accelerate is for master's students. That would be a four month co op. And that would be seven and a half thousand dollars per co-op they could provide you with. So these are, I mean, the co-op tax credit is what we spoke about, just that could be applied to the NSERC Experience Award. But apprentice tax credits, um, so in, if it's a qualified apprentice program, so things like cooks, power line technicians, machinists, um, you can get up to ten thousand dollars per year over the course of four years. Um, and then the co-op tax credit, in which we uh, spoke about just briefly, that could be added on to the NSERC Experience Award. Um, so that would be an additional $3,000. So we have some industry-specific funding. And uh, Greta, if you want to... Yeah, so there uh, are a couple of programs out there uh, for the agricultural food and beverage industry. Uh, the Agri Innovate is one of a suite of programs. So this is uh, for um, capital costs uh, for equipment um, or um, expansion of a business to try and uh, commercialize new innovative agricultural technologies or to adopt and adapt new innovative technologies into an agricultural business. It's a loan, so it's a repayable zero interest fund uh, that you can put towards those kind of capital costs. And related to that, AgriScience, this is an R&D grant, again for the agricultural industry, for developing new food and beverage uh, technologies, products, processes, recipes, um, has to be highly innovative and this goes towards your, your R&D uh, development costs. Uh, Agri-marketing. Yeah, so I mean the, the agri-marketing is, I guess, it's, uh, it's, it's another thing about accessing foreign markets and then some of the marketing costs uh, um, in relation. It's, it's pretty similar to the CAN export program that we mentioned before. Agricultural companies are not eligible for CAN export. They have to do this program instead just because it has a specific stream for them. Otherwise, pretty similar. Another agri program, agri assurance. So this is if um, a food and beverage company is trying to sell their product into a foreign market and they need to get certain product certifications or testing done to allow them uh, to be able to sell into that market. This will cover the cost of the certifications and the testing. Again, up to fifty thousand, fifty percent. So agricultural youth green jobs, um, so I'd say this is most closely related to, the, once again, like a hiring grant. Um, so what this is, it can provide you up to $10,000 uh, per hire, and this is more of a hire that's in the agricultural uh, industry. So the Sustainable Technology, or sorry, Sustainable Development Technology Fund. So this is for uh, kind of pre-commercial clean technology. Um, this is kind of a big one. So it's more so if they're looking for like the first ever type of technology in Canada. It's more so focused on like clean air, clean soil, um, those types of things. So looking for big solutions uh, in Canada, and they can give up to four million over the course of five years. 
the low carbon economy leadership funds, um, unless we've heard, I don't know, Greta, if you've heard more either about it, um, but this is something, once again, that's not released yet. Um, yeah, it's coming soon. It's a, it's a new strategy that they're going to have for um, uh, clean tech solutions that are going to solve uh, environmental issues here in, in Canada, be applied here in Canada, more, more on the demonstration uh, application side as opposed to the R&D side uh, of projects. And the Ontario Scale Up voucher. So this is for um, this one's you know pretty challenging to get into, but this is essentially for any very fast growing uh, companies um, that we could provide funding for them to put money once again to their scaling of their business. Um, so it can be up to one million dollars, but there is a, a set of pretty rigid uh, qualifications of what your company should be looking like in order to be qualifying for this government grant. Uh, so the OCE Small Business Innovation Challenge, I'd say this is uh, similar to one of the ones that we spoke about too, which is the Innovation Solutions Canada. So um, once again, they're looking for various solutions um, to various, um, I guess, various challenges that they may be facing. Um, but this can provide funding uh, for various projects. Once again, an example of that that they're looking for is, I guess, um, uh, impairment when driving uh, for marijuana specifically. So obviously with the marijuana you know, industry growing quite a bit, there's nothing quite uh, out there yet that's going to be detecting anything like that. Um, but those are the sorts of, uh, sorts of things that they're looking for, calls for, and adapting some of that technology as well. And very similar to the previous slide, uh, slides, so the Cybersecurity FinTech Innovation Pilot Program, um, they're looking for some sort of inter, in a, innovation cybersecurity solutions as well. Um, so there, this is a government grant uh, specifically for that as well. Okay, so government grants. So should you apply? Um, we can hit the next slide if you want. So one of the most important things, once again, to be thinking about in terms of government grants is the time of when you're actually submitting these, right? So number one, you need to know what the qualifications are, uh, like so what the stipulations are to be, you know, the possibly approved for these grants. But there's more to the story than that. But one thing for sure is the timeliness of when you're submitting this matters because these are for future projects. If this project has started, um, it, it's too late to actually be getting money for this government grant. So once again, just to reiterate, so tax credits, they're more of an entitlement. So once you're doing research and development, you can claim the shred tax credit um, if you're doing it correctly and you're getting all of your uh, proper eligible ex expenditures, you can really maximize that claim and get money back. Government grants, it's almost like they're picking winners, right? So it, it's, it's not guaranteed that somebody's gonna be getting a government grant. There's a certain amount of money that they're looking to give out, and they're gonna give it out to very specific people. So that being said, so what affects your chances of success? So you need to kind of understand what the government is looking for when they have these specific government grants. And this is really where our company does come into play. Um, part of what we do is really assess kind of what the government grant is looking for, so why they actually brought it out, but also how your company or how your future project might be able to impact what they're looking for. You do need to tell a story when you're actually submitting these government grants to give yourself the best opportunity to obtain them. And I think that that's where a lot of people go wrong is you know, just because you're qualified to potentially get that government grant, there needs to be a specific spin on these, these uh, submissions as well to give yourself the best opportunity. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's the decision to be applying should be strategic. So just once again, uh, I can't stress that enough, the timeliness of when you're actually submitting these, um, understanding what's out there. Like one of the things I just want to make very clear is just even since last week, some of these things have changed, right? And so we've called a couple of people and it was, uh, it was in Calgary and there was also some agricultural grants that came out that had very tight deadlines. And we talked to a couple companies and they missed the deadline, right? But we talked to them and they were saying, oh my God, like, you know, I, I wish that you called me about a week ago. You know, so about, you know, just knowing about these government grants is step number one. And that's really where we come into play is knowing when these are changing, how these are changing, but also the strategy behind making sure that we can try and obtain them for various companies. And that's it.